welcome to Marco Lorensky. And uh, Marco's a wonderful sculptor who has a really active Instagram account and shares some really truly innovative and fun sculpting techniques and demonstrates them beautifully. And I wanted to bring him to you guys so that you could um, get to know him and learn a little bit more about what he does and why he does it and how he does it and all of that. So welcome, welcome. Um, Marco, you have a huge following on Instagram platform, on your Instagram platform, but a lot of people don't know very much about you because Instagram doesn't really lend itself very well to the rambling and that kind of stuff. So people don't know a whole lot about your background. So can you give us a little bit of a peek behind the curtain and tell us about you? Who are you and what are you about? Yeah, um, I've... Uh... I finished some school, some art school, uh, but never, never did any any job that uh, concerns art. Uh, indeed, I'm still working in a bakery. Um, but I've discovered uh, polymer clays a few years ago by watching one video on on YouTube, and uh, I saw a girl making a Hagrid's house from Harry Potter uh, uh, with a jar, and I thought I could do that too. And my girlfriend was already using polymer clay, so I asked her to give me a few pieces and some tools. And um, and it took me three weeks to make that that first house, but it turned out actually great. And so I've discovered myself uh, with with polymer clays. I mean that that thing was inside me, but I didn't know that at all. And uh, I've started making some. Very though some houses in, I think in in one year I did two or three, not more than that. <clears throat> but then I was looking for some sort of support, some, for some sort of boost or for an energy drink, okay? Because uh, working with polymer clays without showing what are you doing, you are you don't know if you are doing it right or wrong, mm -hmm. if uh, it is something new or not. I wasn't used to follow a lot of tutorials around because I was trying to be original, not to be heavily influenced by, mm. by the existing things. So I've tried to post a few things on Instagram and that worked actually. But the downside <laughs> was that people started asking me, how did I do that? So from a simple photos and posts, I have started uh, making some small tutorials and that worked even better. I got tons of followers just with, with first few tutorials I did. I mean, really a lot of followers. My um, brick wall uh, video that I did, I think one month after, after I've started uh, working, uh, posting on Instagram, uh, brought me uh, more than 1000 followers. Wow. Uh, and that, that worked great. The point is, people started calling me, calling me teacher, master, <laughs> but I'm not. I was just sharing the things I was doing. And it, it was, sometimes it was even, uh, even painful because they was expecting, I was posting daily, they was expecting a new tutorial every day, but I didn't have anything to show. Uh, so I was forced to invent new techniques to find something new every single day. But that worked. That 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 actually worked great, and so I'm here. Good. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you did that. I'm glad that you uh, got the bug because you're bringing a different, a different, um, I think a different take into the into the polymer world. So I really, I really appreciate that. Um, you obviously speak some weird language as people got to hear. So yeah, you were uh, raised in Serbia, but yeah, you're now in Italy. Born. So tell us that story. That's that's an odd yeah. combination. So how did that happen? Uh, I was born in Serbia in 78. I'm 43 years old. And um, I've lived there till I was 16, uh, I think, till 94. And then I came in Italy because my my parents were divorced when I was little. So my father was living here and my mother was living there in, in Serbia, in Belgrade. And uh, I had some troubles there. I mean, I, I let's say I wasn't 
mm, nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, my mother thought that uh, it was a good idea to send me here um, with my father for at least a few months. Uh, it was a summertime. But then in September, my father asked me to, to stay here and to try to, to finish schools here. Mm -hmm. So I was forced to learn Italian in something like eight months. <laughs> wow. And I've started the, the school, the middle um, high school, uh, eight months later, actually, one year later, here in Italy, and I've finished it. And that's the story. So I'm actually speaking more or less four languages. Wow. What's the fourth yeah. one? English? Uh, Croatian. Croatian. Oh, Croatian. No, yeah. they, they, they're separate languages. I also know uh, a bit of German and French because I've studied right. those two languages for three years each, but I'm not using them. So, right. It's hard when you don't really, have really access. really, really super yeah. rusty. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So it seems that you mostly sculpt um, medieval themed themed things like castle doors and huts and dungeons and rustic yeah. cottages and such. Why? Why is that your thing? I why not? Why influence. not cartoons? Mm, I've tried, but uh, cartoonish kind of things are cute kind of things, and that doesn't work. I mean. Um, Whenever I make something that I, I try to make it uh, um, somehow cute, my girlfriend <laughs> just watched me say, you are so man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Nothing wrong that with that. For me. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I've tried. I swear, I've tried to make some uh, cartoonish kind of things, uh, some sweet kind of things, some cute uh, dragon babies even. But that doesn't work. Somehow they look so serious, so creepy. The point is, <laughs> yeah, the point is, I'm always trying to make the things uh, um, as much realistic as possible. That is why all those textures, all those mm -hmm. techniques of paintings, shading, and stuff like that. And that doesn't work if you make some cute stuff, so cartoonish kind of fairy dolls, because Mm, they are actually quite simple and definitely not for me. And why I've picked those medieval, actually the, more than medieval, medieval, it is a fantasy um, genre. And it's because of, I think because of video games and films mostly. Mm -hmm. And um, I am heavily influenced by, the, by those. And so I've started uh, thinking about my, my own world. Mm, filled with creatures, with, with stories, with stuff, and I'm slowly going there. I mean, I'm going to create an entire new fantasy world. Oh, wonderful. Trying to inspire uh, other people. That's Good. the point. So Good. I have, on, on one side, uh, making those um, textures, uh, uh, dioramas, um, fairy dolls. On the other side, I'm Scotting uh, characters too. Mm -hmm. So, do you typically make larger works? Do you, because like, are your are your fairy doors part of larger works? Like, do you make larger things as well? Yeah, yeah. I'm right now. I'm. I mean, this is one of my small, smaller works. The one oh, I'm right. working on right now. Mm -hmm. And this is quite small, actually. And going to something really, really way bigger than, than this one, for example. Right. And uh, you, you, you'll see, I mean, next month I will post my, my first creation. I, I, I was thinking about a channel called something, tell me the story, where Ooh. I'm going to post a creation without saying anything. I like that. Okay. And I want to see if I can, I mean, no description at all nothing nothing just uh, a creation full of small details that should guide you to a sort of story and uh, i was thinking to make a sort of even contests i mean uh, asking people for a story behind that creation and then the best one wins something something like that 
or even a, even even the creation I, I did. I like that idea. Kind of an interactive yeah. Um, yeah. situation with your with your audience. I think that would be a lot of fun. That would be cool. That's good that's idea. my idea. I, I want to I want to get there. Good. Definitely. So do you sell your work? No. I've I've sold something uh and only in US actually because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I I love people from USA because uh, they appreciate handmade work. They mm -hmm. appreciate the, the unique kind of stuff. And here in Italy, whenever you make something, uh, the first thing they are going to ask, and a discount, a small discount. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's the point. I'm I'm sorry. I, I love Italians absolutely, but uh, I mean, a lot of my fellow artists here are keep complaining about that. They want mm -hmm. some super cool stuffs, uh, mm -hmm. unique uh, that will take you hours and days to make them, but not to pay them at all. Right, and right. that doesn't work. Well, In I think US, that comes that also comes from the Walmart mentality. You know, the the mentality that that. Um, that you can always get it cheaper at Walmart. So people always try to bring the price down, 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 and they they don't realize that this isn't a commodity. This isn't this isn't flour or corn that's the same this for everybody. This is something that's unique and special. And I think people forget that. We don't have a Walmart here, but we have uh, Chinese shops. Yeah, same thing. Same ev thing. Everything there, yeah. and uh, you can buy them there anything for for a few bucks. Right. And right. Usually, my answer is go and see if you find there something. Yeah, I mean, exactly. If you want uh, an original uh, glowing pumpkin made in polymer clay for Halloween, I can make you one, definitely. Mm -hmm. But you cannot pretend to pay it $5 right. or $10. Right. I mean, no chance. Go to, go to the go dollar store. Go, go, to the, go to the cheap shop for that. Yeah. No, That's I, the point. I if you want something unique, uh, I can I can do that with no problem. But pay me if I, the best thing about uh, the people I've uh, I've sold in US was that I've never uh, told them a price. Mm. It was yeah, it was a sort of game. I mean, I did few few com I did few commissions and. Uh, I've accepted only the commissions I, I, I liked, actually. I mean, something original, um, something, those small, I don't know if you saw them, those small um, um, fairy dust I did on, on some keys. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I've just told them, I will, I will do it. I will make a video about it. And once I've finished it, uh, tell me if you like it and pay what you think is right. And usually they paid even more than I, I was expecting. Every time it, it was more than at least 50% more. Wow, that's a really yes. a good thing. Maybe that's a good pricing strategy we can learn from. So what are the, you told me before, the two most important things that are required to do to be successful in polymer clay that you can't find in any polymer clay store. That you can't find in any, <laughs> what are those? Yeah, passion and patience. Yeah. And without without of those, um, especially when you make those, now I'm faster, I'm making some, my own tools to be really, really fast. But uh, at the beginning, it took me hours to make and just a single fairy dough without Without those two, you you can't you can't do anything. You know, it's one of the things that I'm always um, wanting to reinforce here in Insiders is that it's not just about the skills, or or actually it is skills, but that passion and um, patience are also skills that you that are really important. And it's not just about the things you learn in a tutorial. It's also the the there's more to it than that. And so you, I, I like that passion and passion and patience. I think those are really there, good. There are two, two sort of rules that I follow. One is that when I mean passion and patience every single time, I mean, mm, never give up. The second one is that <clears throat> if you do only the thing you know how to do, you will never be more than you are right now. Oh, that's good. Say that's, that again, say that again. 
if you do only, uh, I don't know uh, if I'm saying it correctly in English, but if you do only the things you know to do, how to do, you will never be more than you are right now. Perfect. You will never grow. I love that. I love okay. that. I think that's really important. I think uh, sooner or later I will uh, leave Polly McLeish. I mean, when I reach the 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 point that I, I can't do more than this, mm -hmm. I will probably leave them. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to push every single time. If if I'm not making progress with every new creations, I am doing something wrong, probably. I, I hear you. It makes sense. So I I heard that I know that you have a partnership with Papa's Clay. Tell us about how that happened. How did that come about? What's that all about? Uh, that was crazy. That was insane. <laughs> um, yeah, this story. Uh, this is an an unbelievable story, actually. Um, I've desired. Uh, I told you before. I believe. I'm firm, firmly convinced about law of attraction. And when I started working with Polymer Clays, I've discovered that the biggest uh, trade fair here in uh, in Europe was um, Creative World at Frankfurt. And it is something insane. I mean, there are brands from all over the world and it is the, the really huge. And, uh, but usually, uh, I mean, to get there, to be there, you need to have a lot of experience. You need to be a good artist to have some cool collaboration. So I've desired, I told to my girlfriend, actually, I don't know how, but somehow next year I will be at Frankfurt. And that was the first year I've started working with Polymer Clays. One month later, my girlfriend told me to put hashtag in Serbian. And I told her that it had no sense. I mean, why I'm I'm mostly posting in English. Why should I put polymer naglina? That is polymer clay in Serbian. Mm -hmm. But I've listened to her, and uh, three posts later, I've got contacted by them. Uh, they wrote me in English without knowing mm -hmm. uh, that I was from from their city. I mean, they are from Belgrade. Uh, we get we got in touch. I I went there. I visited them a few times. And uh, they had this new uh, new product trying to push in Europe. I brought it to Italy, and then all the things started. And then in August, uh, owner of Papa's Clay call, um, called me, and he asked me <laughs> what uh, if I was free the last uh, week of January next year. And I was my heart was just bum, 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 because I know. What was that all about? If I was free, uh, yeah, I told him, yeah, you are talking about Creative World in Frankfurt, right? And he told me, yes, you know about Creative World. Yeah, of course I know. Of course, and yes. I, I went there and that was the best experience of my life. Wow. That, that was insane. And since then, we, we have this great collaboration. I've, I had, I got, um, Contacted also by other brands, mm -hmm. um, way bigger than Papa's Clay. But um, a new guy in polymer clay world with a new polymer clay, I like that combo. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely stick with them. Not to mention that um, Papa's Clay works great for what I'm doing. It, uh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Because of that texture uh it helps me a lot most most of the time i don't e even need to make a texture because it has that silky texture that looks great and for small details especially um it is not sticky like like other polymer clay so i can work with no problem especially so when i need so to be... go, oh, go ahead i don't know if you can see this this was a uh, that uh, mm, underwater fairy though I did. Mm -hmm. Let me see. I can show you closer. Oh yeah, we get the we can see it. Okay, yeah. it is full of super small details, totally sculpted in in Papa's clay, mm -hmm. and I can't do this with with other polymer clays. That's the point, because they are keep uh, they stick to each Interesting. other. Interesting. 
Interesting. Okay. So tell us then what is what's so different about Papa's clay? Tell us about it. Why would somebody want to use it over, for instance, Primo or Fimo? What's unique about tell us about Papa's clay? What's the story? Uh, well, first thing first is that it is not sticky as other polymer clays. I know it looks scramble at the beginning when you start working with it, but it reacts really fast with the heat. So just with, with the heat of my hands, it reacts. And uh, I love it because it also cools down fast. Uh, yeah. I, and I love that part because I'm making, <laughs> I didn't show you this, I'm making a tons of small pumpkins right now. I don't know if you can see them. Right, right. Okay. The, hey. right. Making a pumpkin with the soft clay is actually impossible. But it, with Papa's clay, it's super easy. I think I will make a tutorial tomorrow on how to make them with Papa's clay. Good. And because um, as soon as it cools down, you are not going to deform. You are not going to ruin the part mm -hmm. you already sculpted. That's the point. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a sort of a downside because it cools down fast. But if you learn how to work with it, uh, it is not a downside at all. Okay. That is why I love it. And the second thing is that uh, I have a, problems with my skin um, with, when I'm using some other uh, polymer clays, but not with Papa's clay. I think it is it is the most uh, most safe polymer clay in the world. Uh, for, your, because, for your hands, yeah. Yeah, the, it does not contain any kind of allergens or, or things and it works great. It was tested in laboratories in, in France. I know that for sure they have all certifications. And that actually works. I've tried uh, to send it to a few uh, Italian artists here that had problems with other with other polymer clays, and actually uh, they they sold all other polymer clays, and now they are working only with Papa's clay. Good, good. I, I'll have to admit that I was skeptical um, when I got it, and then when I actually started, I, I it drove me nuts when I first tried to use it because I was trying to use it the same way you use Primo. No. And you can't use it like that. No, no, and no when chance. I started, when I started, when I just put my pasta machine away and used it with my hands, it it came into its own. And it was like, oh, I love this stuff. Now I wish I were a sculptor because <laughs> I, I love it. It's it's really fun to work with. It's really I'm gratifying. using it also with the with the pasta machine with no problem because I learned I've learned how to use it. Yeah. You need to warm it uh, really well. I have to admit it has some problems with pasta machines, but I mean I'm making peri those and those are all layers, and uh, uh, it it actually works pretty well. So I I, I can't complain about that. Another thing that it holds uh, all kind of paints really great because it does not contain so lot of oils and uh, other stuff. So, you know, when you try to paint uh, baked polymer clay with acrylics, uh, it's a sort of hydro repellent. Okay, you ha usually have problems painting other polymer clays, but not with Papa's clay, definitely. Right. No matter if I'm using uh, mica powders, uh, pigments, or acrylic paints, uh, looks great. Good, good, good. Really so, great. um, what did you always start with? No, you didn't start with Papa's clay. What, what did, what other clays have you used? All of them. I've all tried of them. all of them, and I've started with Fimo and with Cernit because I, I had those. My girlfriend was using them. Uh, I think I have every single brand of Papa of, of Papa's clay, okay. of polymer <laughs> clay here. <laughs> every single brand of polymer clay here. But I'm, I I realized that uh, Papa's clay is can be perfect for every creation. But the point is, once it is just like you know this better than I do. <laughs> We have tons of tools, but in the end, you are using only two or three of them, okay? Mm -hmm. Why? Because you know how to use them. You are so uh, used 
to, to use them every day. And so uh, uh, Papa Spray is the same thing. I mean, most of the time, the other day I've tried to use another brand. Uh, I had some two years old polymer clay here, tried to pass them in pasta machine, but it was so sticky. Man, so <laughs> sticky. Yeah. Oh gosh. I, I, I left it there. Right. Because it was possible to work for me. I don't know how to work with those kind of clays anymore. That's the point. Have you ever worked with cost clay? Yeah, I know. How does, of... so, so tell me how Papa's clay compares to cost clay. They are totally different. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, uh, cost clay is, I am one of those guys that like more the 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 beta version of cosplay the first i i i was i am still one of the tester no matter i'm working with papa Clay, i've talked with donald and uh, and he's sending me some cosplay to test at the beginning and i fell in love i mean cosplay is, is a great product mm -hmm. but actually i i like more the first version of cosplay the the, the, the hardest one because now it is super soft mm -hmm. and for sculptors Having a super soft clay is not a plus. No, right. definitely it because wishes, uh, yeah, I mean, you um, super sculpty is perfect. For example, if you need to sculpt some small details or making some figures, uh, but on the other hand, when you bake it, it is super super fragile. Because clay, on the other hand, when you bake it, is it becomes a sort of rubber. I mean, it is indestructible. So great definitely great product but i i prefer i prefer it a bit, bit harder that's the point right right so what's your biggest advice for primo users or for users from that are used to primo or fimo or traditional polymer clays um and they pick up papa's clay for the first time what would your advice be for when they make that transition what would you tell them it is like changing a car you change a car Okay, it is not um, driving a Mustang and I buy another Mustang. I mean, you've changed totally a car. Mm -hmm. I mean, totally. Uh, think, you need to think like that. I mean, it is a sort of starting from, from beginning. Mm -hmm. I think this, this applies to every single brand of polymer clay. If you are, uh -huh. yeah, I think I you, you. You, know, yeah, yeah, you know this I better do. than I do. There are no bad polymer clays. Mm -hmm. I've, I've discovered, yeah, well, there are some <laughs> from China that have experimented. But I mean, the only clay I, I, I really, really don't like at all is the Scapi 3. But, but because it is super soft and it right. is. It's like toothpaste. Mm, yeah. Sorry? It's like toothpaste. It reminds me of exactly. toothpaste or cookie yeah, dough. I, it's just I don't know how to work with with it, right. but that doesn't mean it it is a bad clay. I mean, it works for someone. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, I mean, forget, don't forget everything you learned uh, about polymer clays. But think about this: you have something new, uh, and you need to discover how to use it. So start from beginning. Mm -hmm. Papa's clay, I think, works great. I, I definitely, I know it, it, it is, it is crumble. It, it has some problems with pasta machines, but it is not meant to be used like that. That's mm -hmm. the point. So if you need to sculpt, um, I mean, you, you can use it definitely. I've, I've saw people making some insane jewels with Papa's clay. Mm -hmm. So it, it works for them. Just don't, don't, don't focus, don't, uh, don't think you're using uh, Scalpy or you're using Fimo or you're, you're using just another brand. Right. I, like, I think the car ana analogy is a good one because you're still, it's still a car, you're still using it for transportation, but you have to use very different controls. You have to look in a different place to, to learn okay. how to do what you know how to do. Yeah, and, the point is, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, mm, if you have a small car, you will find easily a uh, much easier parking place okay if you have a, a fast car you will it will take you less time to get right where you want if you have a, a big car you can bring uh, other people with you that's the point i mean every single clay every single brand of polymer clay is is a different kind of car right that's right that. that makes that's that makes perfect sense 
So in Italy, do you teach? Do you teach in person? Do you give, do you give classes? No, not for now. I mean, privately I've talked with, most of the time it becomes uh, all together because people um, start asking me also about Instagram. Mm -hmm. How did I got so much followers? So it is yeah. Paul McClay plus <laughs> Instagram tips plus, uh, yeah, all the things I did, all the things I've, I've showed to people, I, I did that for free, definitely. So what do you think? is the biggest mistake that people make when working with polymer clay and trying to sculpt with polymer clay? What's the biggest mistake? Um, blaming polymer clays and tools and not themselves. Ooh. Usually, yeah, that is, the, that, that is what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay, uh, okay, it is a polymer clay that doesn't work. It is, uh, I don't have enough tools, I don't have, all kind of excuses. I mean, let's go a step back. Passion and patience. If you don't have those two, you can't do anything. That's the point. Mm -hmm. That's the point. So you need to practice. You need to exercise. If 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 the first one. I mean, no, I don't have my first house here. Uh, but if 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 the first one didn't came out as you was expecting, it is not, it is not neither your fault. You need uh, more time and more experience. That's the point. So, so what is, the, so what is the solution to, to getting, to getting better? If it's not the tools and it's not the clay and it's you. So how do you change that? How do you improve that? Practicing daily. Practicing. It's all there. Um, I don't know if you know who is Micha, Michart. She's an Italian artist. Uh, oh, now yeah. She, yeah. Michart, mm -hmm. yeah. Now she's, she has become world-known artist. I mean, she has a great future in front of her, but she's practicing daily. Mm -hmm. I mean, to learn how to make a simple skull, I saw her making 30 skulls in a row. Mm -hmm. And that's the point. When I when I did some classes with Simon Lee, uh, it was the same thing. I mean, to sculpt the first human body, I mean, roughly sculpting. It, first time it took me three hours. Now I can do that in thirty minutes. Right. That's the point. Mm -hmm. So it is just practice, daily, daily practice. So why aren't and um, I'm sure you don't know the definitive answer on this, but it is unusual for men to be. Um, active in polymer clay it tends tend to be mostly women so um why do you think that is why aren't there more men working in polymer clay i have no idea actually it is it is super relaxing and i don't find it so so female hobby i mean it is a hobby for for both both, both sex uh, really have no clue I mean, except me, the um, few other artists that I know here in Italy, for example, are, are really few, few of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are, there is a lot of sculptors, mm -hmm. but um, working with polymer clays, yeah, but mostly with, with all based clay like Chavant or, or, or monster clay or things like that. Mm -hmm. But not a lot of people making, uh, making some stuffs with polymer clays like jewels or like peridots or similar and i really have no idea i i think it is a probably it is a uh, a color problem because i think that girls uh, can match the colors way better and mm, never thought of that yeah uh, i think the colors colors are a huge part of polymer clay creations especially if you don't paint uh, your creations. So I think that girls know way better how to use those colors. I know that because um, when I need to make those coral reefs, I have some serious problems because I need to put all the colors together to see what works and what, what doesn't. I think that that is a point. That's interesting. I had I had never thought of that. What do, what do you think is um, 
What do you struggle with? What's something you struggle with the most? Hmm. <laughs> I've got you hmm. stumped. <laughs> Come on. No, <laughs> no. I, I, there are a few things, but I, I'm, I am, I have to confess this. I'm used to to avoid <laughs> the things I don't like. <laughs> uh, that is why I usually don't accept those uh, kind of uh, strange commissions and people asking me to do some some strange stuff. At the beginning, it was uh, those was uh, well. I still struggle a bit with the faces. A human mm -hmm. face is a huge problem, but the key is to make a skull. If you learn how the skull is made, mm -hmm. you will. Uh, I'm talking about something realistic, not about cartoonish right. kind of things. If you learn how the skull is made, you will position correctly everything else. Mm -hmm. And I'm still exercising daily with, with those, but now I'm quite able to sculpt uh, a head in a matter of, I think, 15, 20 minutes with no problem. And convincing head that looks <laughs> human. <laughs> so what other hobbies or interests do you have besides working with polymer clay? I left all the rest, actually, except I'm still uh, um, a gamer. I'm still playing on PlayStation because it, it gives me it gives me, well, from time to time, I'm losing even too much time there, but it gives me some interesting ideas for, for the things I'm doing. Um, games like Monster Hunter World or mm -hmm. things like that, that uh, those are really huge worlds and a lot of good artists are, uh, are inspired by those games. So definitely that and I'm also a piano player. I've yeah, <laughs> but I left. Uh, I left the piano when I came here. I finished uh, school actually, six years school uh, piano piano school. Don't underestimate. Like don't yeah. underestimate how um, how differently you how don't underestimate how important your piano background is to your ability to sculpt because the the dexterity of your fingers. Because I learned piano as a as a kid as well, and I think that makes the ability to be able to mm -hmm. to manipulate your hands in a fine way. I think that I think that I think it's important. My my brother is a piano player. He's living. He lives in uh, I think near Chicago. He lives in the U.S. Um, and he finished studies there. I mean, he's uh, he's he's working with piano actually. See, I, I I didn't like it when I was uh, when I was uh, younger, but I I miss I miss my piano now. Mm -hmm. I think sooner or later I, I'll get back to it definitely. So um, one last question, then then I'm going to open it up to everybody. So and have as a questions from everyone. So um, where do you get your inspiration from? Where do you get your ideas? You mentioned video games, but where else? Because it's like you said, when you when you mm. want to post every day and you're sitting there staring at it going, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Where do you get your ideas? Where does that come from? Um, from outside. I mean, just go out and take a walk. And just watch, watch. We are in Italy, so we are full of castles, old buildings, and those kind of stuff. Uh, we have also beautiful nature here. I'm near, uh, I mean, I have Italian Alps 20 kilometers from me, another 20 kilometers from me. So a lot of things to see and to get inspiration from. I mean, from time to time, I'm just watching a piece of wall and thinking about, OK, uh, Let's take just a piece of that wall or, 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 or just the scene that I saw. Let's try to make a fairy tale, make a creation uh, from, from there. Other, all, other than books and, and films, uh, like all, all the other people, but usually uh, once per week or once every few weeks, I'm used to go in the mountain, take a walk and, uh, and get some inspirations. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think uh, I'm used to uh, take pictures of, of the things I 
I, I, I want to reproduce uh, here. I mean, those walls, those mushrooms, woods, things like that. Uh, because looking for a reference uh, on Google, I think it is wrong because it is already the picture that you don't know if it is real or not. Okay, so it already lost something. When you take a picture, you saw it, you know how, how it is, how it looks in a real life. Mm -hmm. So starting from there is huge plus. Good, that's, good. That's the point. That's not a good idea. Good, good. Well, thank you. Thank you. I want to ask, um, I'm going to take me off of Spotlight and I'm going to take you off of Spotlight and we are going to, I want to open the floor to questions. Got it. There you are. Okay. Um, I was curious about your um, art experience before you started working with polymer were you working in some other sculpting medium before that or no no i was uh, that that's a good question because uh, there is an interesting story be, be, behind that i finished uh, art school here but i was good in drawing but i was missing that um, third axe that third dimension and yes. I, I was missing that one definitely I mean, a uh, piece of paper wasn't enough. And uh, mm -hmm. I was looking for something that in 3D, that, that ZX and that worked for me definitely, but ne never before that. I mean, I did something in school, sculpted something, but no, mm -hmm. I've started it three years ago. Thank you. Gotcha. Good, thank you. Next question, Heather. Hi, yeah. Um, I remember you from when you first started on Instagram. I started following you a long time ago. And I remember when, when the thousands of people hit. <laughs> and you had the, um, your, your, your freak out. And, and I, I, I know how that feels. It, it's, it's suddenly, suddenly you're in the spotlight and you're going... I don't know how to handle this. I can't cope. And I remember, I remember you put up some live live videos and saying, you know, guys, look, I'm just a beginner, and I, I can't post every day, and I can't do this every day. But you, re, you were a real inspiration for me, because thank you so much. The way you handled it, and I could, I could, I could, I could feel your stress. I could feel how you were struggling with it all, and yet you still maintained that dignity and you didn't take any you know you were an example to everybody of how you should behave when suddenly you're thank you so much by by all of that and you you know you, you've taught me loads <laughs> so yeah please just keep doing what you're doing and, and and thank you for sharing like your video setup and because that's the bit that I struggle with I'm I'm still scared about entering into the the video side of things just because i'm not good with technology write me write me privately send me a, a yeah. direct message on yeah, instagram I'll okay and we can yeah. we can talk about that or, or even on skype i can show you a few yeah. tricks how to do that okay yeah that would be great yeah with no problem well, thank you but yeah okay. please just i mean keep doing what you're doing you do, it's you, yeah i i, I so had some i had so much <laughs> you've got I a had long some way problems uh, I had some problems in, in past few months because I had uh, we lost few people in the bakery because few people left. Uh, so from six hours, six seven hours per day, I've, I was working nine ten hours per day, and I didn't have enough mm -hmm. time to sculpt anything. And the last year in my Instagram profile was uh, hacked twice in one week. Yeah. And uh, that was huge block for me. I'm on, I mean, it was blocked for almost three months. So it wasn't a great year, actually. But I'm, I, I mean, at the beginning, I didn't have enough ideas to post every day. Now I have tons of ideas, but I, I don't have time to post <laughs> them all. Time. Yeah. But, I mean, that, that, that's strange. That is really strange. But yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. 
well, so really I'll, yeah, I'll definitely drop you a line. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you. That's wonderful. Um, Martina, you have a question. I don't have a question, actually. I just wanted to say, uh, to, to just uh, continue what Heather said, uh, because I was also following Marco and we met before this all happened. And I was sure that he was going to make it because he had this de determination. You know, you could see that he has passion and he wanted to do it, not for the followers, not for the fame, but for his own art, for his own um, um, growth. And I could see that it would happen. So I, I never had a doubt, you know. So it's it's kind of a logical uh, continu continuation of everything that, that was going on, you know. He, and as he said, if you work and if you're persistent, then, then you will make it. But uh, I read it like um, maybe last week or something um, that actually uh, something that Marco said uh, is very well um, uh, um, matches with something that Van Gogh said. Uh, it, it's something goes in the lines of, um, I'm do every day I'm doing something that I didn't do before in order to learn how to do it. So it's it's a very good continuation with Marco said. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. I, I met I met Martina at uh, at the beginning, at the first beginning. Uh, I met Martina when I went to Belgrade to meet uh, people from Papa's Clay. And she was super cute. She gave me some some great tips because uh, she had way she has way more experience than than I do, and not only that she gave me also uh, all extra tools that she had uh, because at the beginning I mean I didn't have anything I mean I had few stuff that my girlfriend gave me didn't have sponsor didn't I have to say one thing that I've uh, I've sent it few messages to few brands around when I was about 1000 followers, I didn't have money to buy polymer clay. And I was asking those brands to send me some just, just to try. I didn't got neither, neither one answer from all of them. The funny thing is as soon as I've reached, <laughs> I've reached 10,000 followers, they all came back asking for collaborations, but I was already with Papa's clay. So, <laughs> It, it, it's okay, but uh, yeah, Martina gave me gave me huge hand at the beginnings, both with uh, with tips and tricks, and and also with with uh, with tons of tools that that she gave me. Definitely, that's that's because I believed, you know, I I really saw determination, and it was something, you know, uh, it's nice to see somebody if you just just give somebody a little push, and it's it's nice to see how it blooms so yeah i mean mm -hmm. if whatever you can you just pass it forward and you did you. because you were you were teaching so many people on instagram for free how to do stuff that you learned yourself in on in a harder way you're giving mm -hmm. them you know videos and 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 uh tools to make their own things so. Yeah, my philosophy is that one. I, I mean, if I bring you from A to B and show you how to do that, then maybe you will show me how to do from B to C, and then I'll do again the step from C to D. I mean, that is, there are not a lot of people working like that. I mean, especially here in Italy, it is all hiding. I mean, oh, I did something cool, but I don't want to show, I don't want to share. This is my tip. I got some problems. With my tutorials, I had some some huge problems, especially here in Italy, with with some fellow artists. Because I'm using that technique. Why did you show that? Because now every every other everyone will do the same. Oh, okay, so who cares? <laughs> I mean, what's the problem? Uh, that, that happens a lot. That happens quite a lot. But I mean. Um, don't think that if if two of us are doing the same thing, you won't find bias. I mean, there are seven billion people on this planet. Yeah, exactly. Are, are you kidding? Yeah, we've talked about that one a lot in our meetings. 
Heather, do you have something else you wanted to add? Yeah, it was actually, again, following on from Martina now. <laughs> um, and that's um, a comment really about the responsibility we have as accomplished artists. Mm -hmm. And that's nurturing those that follow on because you don't know who they're going to be teaching and the influence we have on those around us, you know, you could, you don't know who's following and you don't, right. and, and as, as Marco, you, as you said, it's a two way street, you give something and it does come back. Every time I give something or get, I, I get back, I get, but I get back so much more. And when you see the achievement on someone's face, when they've, finally overcome something they didn't know how to do and you see them excel it's there there are no words to describe it um exactly so, yeah i think we just we've just all got to remember the responsibility we have with what well we're doing said too. well said thank you bertha i see you have your hand up uh one of the uh, i i did come in a chat earlier and one thing is you know in italy italy is um uh, interesting or uh, different because it has such a long history of influencing art um, and it's still you know very much present both in um, just the pieces the architecture I mean like you know most of the, pretty much every church I went into in, in Italy old church had you know old art and and you know surrounded by it and you know the history of patroness of so many artists at, from um, the various um, princes and dukes and stuff in, in Italy. I wonder if that's influenced how Italians approached, how they approach art and artists and, and being an artist, if that could be one of the influences. Mm, you, you mean uh, artists or uh, just random people when they approach art and? Or either one, you know, in terms of artists, you know, the history of um, how, you know, a lot of times it is sponsorship and you, in pieces and maybe is more competitive getting that that sense of getting that, but also just, you know, if you're, you grow up every day seeing, you know, going to church and, you know, there's a Botticelli there or something like that, you know, and all these sculpt sculpture that's available at free or low cost, if that um, affects maybe your value, your uh, how you value art or how, you know, much you want something really different because you see so much or, it was opposed to Americans because we just, you know, we, our history is so short in the yeah. span of you know most of human history um, we just don't have that everything so much of what we have is so new and even though we've produced great artists we just don't you don't grow up with that kind of sense of, of art history so mm. yeah th this is uh, i mean this is a great question uh but uh it uh i think the answer is a bit a bit complicated because uh on one hand and um, what I can see is that, uh, I mean, this is only my opinion, but the young people here, the younger people uh, took a distance from all, from all those kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, I think they, they forgot what they have. Mm -hmm. uh, not only in, in, not only in art, I mean, also in music, also in, uh, a lot of other things here, and they they took uh, just a distance from that, saying, "Okay, it's a past. Uh, those are old kind of stuffs. That doesn't mean you need to reproduce them. I mean, you can get just inspired by those kind of stuffs. So the younger people definitely are going in." Uh, in another in another direction the older artists yeah they are still there but then there's another problem uh, those who, who are i mean italian artists that are i don't want to say good i mean decent they are acting like michelangelo or like leonardo that's the point because I'm I'm Italian artist and I'm in Italy, so who cares? <laughs> I mean, let's find a way in the middle, okay? Uh, let's balance both of those uh, stuffs. I mean, we have huge artistic past, and th that still works great, and we can see a lot of things, and we are really lucky, lucky to see all those 
um, paintings, um, sculptures, buildings, architecture all around us. And on the other hand, we have something new. We need to mix with, with those old, uh, old stuffs. So for now, I've, what I've noticed is that people really acting like world most famous sculptors and people acting like they doesn't care at all uh, living here. There's no uh, middle way. That is what, what concerns me a lot. Mm. I am trying to, to find both of those things. I mean, mm. I am, especially uh, when it comes, uh, uh, when we talk about Italian architecture, I'm, I look a lot of inspiration there. Definitely. Interesting. I don't know if, if, if this is a sort of answer for, for what you asked me, but I, I don't, I don't know how to, how to answer you. That, that's the point. Yeah. I, mean, I was just curious because, you know, that's just my, my impression from my trips. I've had, I've, I've been fortunate to visit Italy four times, mostly on business trips, but you know, try to, you know, get, take some personal time too, as well. And um, in, and that's always just what you know, struck me, um, just that you know sense of of yeah all this old architecture and all these different styles and, and the history of it, um, and um, and I thought well, I wonder, kind of wonder what it's like to actually you know live or grow up in that. Yeah, yeah, I, I can understand so, you because yeah, uh, here when you say I mean uh, in U.S. Uh, I was watching some TV shows. I mean talking about houses. Yeah, this this house is really old. It has eighty years. It has one hundred years. And I was, <laughs> what? <laughs> one hundred years old? I mean, when you say this house is old here, it has something like five hundred years, six hundred years, <laughs> not one hundred. I mean, right. here, if you say it has one hundred year, uh, it is old. Okay, <laughs> let's take it down <laughs> because. It is just a, 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 an old ruined building. But right. if you think about uh, architecture and something that is really old here, uh, yeah, <laughs> it is 1,000 years, probably. Good, that, that, that's the good point. topic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the next. Um, Sandy, I see that you have your hand up. Yes, hi, Marco. Um, I am interested to know whether you participate in any other guild or zoom groups online that belong to polymer clay i belong to several polymer clay groups from where i live in portland oregon uh, one in san diego one with a blue bottle tree with ginger and i find that uh, i learned so much from my other new friends that i have do you participate in that way at all no not for now because um Time is a problem for me because I'm working in a bakery during night. That's the point. Yeah. So uh, all the rest of the day, uh, I need to find a way to to make something, to post something, <laughs> to sleep, and all the rest. So I I wish uh, I wish I had more time. I think I will. If, if everything goes in the right way, I think it is a matter of a few months, I will leave my job and dedicate myself full time only to this. Uh, but for now, I, I, I need to keep that bakery for a few months. I think till January, definitely. And then, then we'll see. I, I would like to participate to more groups because a lot of time uh, it happens to me to I mean, uh, um, people send me a direct message asking me for a tip or something, and I'm used even to um, waste one hour of, of, of my time talking with them with no problem. I mean, I, I, I like, I really love helping other people, but the point is, uh, if, if that was told in, in, in live or in a chat, maybe much more people could benefit that thing that that's the point we so, have a very we have a very good group here in the blue bottle tree and a lot of uh interested people intelligent people um not too many beginners maybe but um 
we would love to have you come. I've looked at your Instagram. Uh, I like your hints and tips and a couple of them I got very excited about because I have so many of these that I don't know what to do with. So now I am sorting my tools, not just paint brushes, but the tools like you yeah, said. Yeah. That, that works great. And then the other one, although I didn't have any foam to put on my um, jar, I just used some rubber bands. And then when I, uh, you gave me this idea, which was great. So I clean it, I just brush it off here and then stick it in the thing like you did with your great. foam rubber. Great, yeah. Yeah, that was good. So thank you very much. Good. Hope to good. see you Welcome. again. Good, thank you. Great, great commentary. All right, time for one more question. Does anybody have a question? Come on, one more. No? Okay, well, in that case, let's just wrap it up. And I wanna thank you, Marco, for joining us and sharing your thoughts. And um, it's, really, it's really wonderful getting a completely different perspective. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed this, thank you. And, thank you uh, so much. Thank you everyone for joining us and um, I'll have the video up in the next couple of days and I'll see you guys around. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye bye.